A question that students often ask when working on their individual research projects is what is the difference between the abstract, introduction and literature review? This is really important because when we're not clear about the difference between those sections, we can end up um, mixing the information between them and it can feel like three introductions that kind of repeat themselves. So in this video, we're just going to briefly explain the difference between them. To work out the difference between the sections, I think it's really important to think about what is the purpose of each of those sections. And by this I mean, what do you want the reader to think by the time they get to the end of that section? And that's what we're going to look at for each of the, the parts. So, first of all, the abstract. The purpose of the abstract is to provide a concise summary of the research. I'm sure you've done a lot of reading for your research projects and realise that often you go straight to the abstract when you read a paper um, and you, that might be the only thing you read about that paper and you read it to try and work out whether it's relevant, whether you need to read it further or just that might give you enough information for what you wanted. So it's a really important um, part of the report um, and it has that function of the concise summary which can be helpful to the researcher who's reading um, a large number of papers. Because it's a summary that should be able to be read by itself, it should be standalone, um, it's, it's usually written last. Because it comes, appears first in the report, sometimes students write it first, but when you do this, um, you c it really has an effect on the content and often there's too much introduction and background information. Although the abstract may have a sentence of background, actually its purpose is not to introduce the report, its purpose is to summarise the report and therefore the background won't be um, any larger part of its summary than the results, the discussion and the conclusions and the method which should also come across. Okay, so what should you include in the introduction? Often people reply to this by saying background information. Well, okay, what do we mean by background information? Are we talking about definitions, dates? Often this can become a bit of a, an encyclopedia of lots of interesting facts and interesting information that we know about the topic. But there's no real direction to it. The introduction to a research report actually has a very specific purpose. It's there to convince the reader of the need for your research. When you're writing your project for an undergraduate programme or for part of your master's, to an extent you're doing it because you have to. It's your assignment that you need to do. Your supervisor is also marking it because they have to. But if we think about this in the, the wider research um, community context, when you re have journal um, papers, nobody has to read those papers, but they need to convince the reader of the interest in their research so that people will want to read it. Similarly, if you're applying for funding for some research, you would have to convince the other person of the need for your research. And that's what you're needing to do in your research project introduction. Why is your research needed? Normally, this will start off be, by being set in a real world need. What is the importance of your topic? What is the problem that you're trying to solve? Some people have much more theoretical topics and it's hard to find a real world need. In this case, you need to explain what the interest is in your topic. Why is it so interesting? What is it that's so compelling that needs to be studied further? We can also think about the need in terms of research. So you might explain what is known, but also then explain what is the gap. So it's like you're building up um, a sense of a jigsaw puzzle. You're saying, showing the real world need, 
the context that we do know, and then there's a gap. And then you fill that gap with your aims and objectives. So your research is meeting that need, filling that gap. You're that jigsaw piece that people have been um, looking for. And that leads to your aims and objectives. Normally, the, in the introduction, most time will be spent on the real-world need and the research context and the gap might just be a, f a couple of sentences, although the exact balance between those different sections will depend very much on um, your particular piece of research. The aims and objectives often comes here at the end of the introduction as the natural kind of flow out of the looking for a need and having this gap but in some fields it comes at the end of the literature review, so it's worth checking. As well as this purpose to convince the reader, you're also helping them understand the context. When you are writing a research project, you're looking at something in a lot of detail, far more detail than most other people have looked at it. But if we think about a Google map, you can zoom in to a location in a very, very specific location, but you can have no idea where in the world you were. It's like that with your research. You can have become highly specialised, but somebody else coming into looking at it cannot be able to see how that fits into the bigger picture. What you need to do is, like a Google map that starts at the world view, um, start broad and then narrow down to the specifics that you want to look at. So convincing the reader of the need for your research and helping them to understand the context. Now we come to the literature review. The literature review might sound from its title fairly obvious what you need to do. You need to review the literature. But what can happen here is that we have um, study one shows, study two shows, study three shows, study four shows where the writer identifies other studies that are relevant and describes each one of them in turn. This is fine, but it's not really helping us to, it's not really providing direction, and it's not really helping us to see where we're going. What the reader wants is for you to show your mastery over the knowledge of the field and to give them the background information they need to understand your project whether that's definitions or that understanding of the research context. If you just describe study one, study two, study three throughout, then you don't provide much extra value over the reader just reading the abstracts of all of those papers. What brings extra value to the reader is when you make connections between studies and between research. When you show the narrowing by showing where is the broad picture, what is the established knowledge, and what is the newer knowledge? Which areas are still debated or unclear, and where are there the gaps? And these should be clearly leading to your research. The narrative still needs to be convincing the reader of the need for your research and narrowing that focus throughout. As you narrow down, you will probably have, near the end, a description of some of the most similar um, studies to your, to your particular research. So to recap, we've been looking at the differences between the abstract introduction and literature review. The abstract is there to summarise your research. The idea of it is it can exist as a standalone um, section that somebody can read if they want to just quickly see what your research was about, what you did and what you found. The introduction's there to persuade the reader of the importance of your research and to help them see the context. In the literature review, you should demonstrate your mastery of understanding the field you should be giving the reader what they need to know to understand your project, helping them to identify what is already known in current research and what isn't, and therefore see the place for your research. <laughs>